Hello, my name is Kathy, and today I'll be discussing how to use homeopathic remedies on ailments. Continuing with infections, infestations, and the immune system, starting with the letter M, part two. But before I do this, I wanted to let you know that because I have a great many videos now on many different topics that I've decided to make several different video playlists so that it's easy to find the videos of greatest interest. So please check out my playlist page. Please refer to my How to Use Homeopathic Remedies video before using the material in this video. I'll be discussing how to use homeopathic remedies on specific ailments, but I've broken these ailments in, for, into categories for easier reference. I'll begin with ailments of the mind and emotions and then move on to ailments of the brain and nervous system. Then I'll address issues with the skin, nails, hair, eyes, ears, nose, teeth, gums, lungs, respiration, heart, blood, circulation, muscles, bones, joints, esophagus, stomach, duodenum, small and large intestine, liver, gallbladder, pancreas, kidney and bladder, special ailments specific to women and then specific to men then issues of the hormones and metabolism, then issues of infections, infestations in the immune system, then issues surrounding fertility, pregnancy, childbirth, postnatal problems, homeopathic remedies for infants, ailments and diseases in childhood, and special issues of adolescence, and finally special issues of the elderly. Constitutional treatment involves treating the totality of the individual person. Everyone is a unique individual with a unique physiology that responds to substances differently. In homeopathy, it's recognized that people react strongly to certain remedies, and as a result of this, they can be loosely placed into different categories called constitutional types. Homeopaths talk of, for example, phosphoric types. These are people who react strongly to phosphorus, or arsenicum album types, those who react strongly to arsenicum album. The belief is that people of one type share similarities in terms of body shape, character, and personality, and the sorts of diseases from which they suffer. As an example, nature mere people tend to be pear-shaped, have a dark complexion, be fastidious and rigid in personality, and keep themselves to themselves. They also crave salt and suffer from constipation. As another example, lycopodium like types tend to be tall, gangly, and of stooped appearance with an anxious expression and a craving for sweets and a propensity to produce intestinal gas. Now, of course, constitutional types have their limitation. In reality, each person is an individual, and so there are many constitutional types as there are human beings. An account must be taken of the sum total of the person's inherent predispositions, past illnesses, diet, general reactions to the environment, intellectual and emotional features, and general attitude towards life. This is what is meant by constitutional treatment. I'll be making detailed videos of the various constitutional types after I've completed the use of homeopathic remedies on ailments. The ideas, procedures, and suggestions in this video and all my homeopathic videos are not intended as a substitute for the medical advice of a trained health professional. Consult your physician before adopting the suggestions in this video. If you're pregnant, do not attempt these techniques without the approval of your physician. So, let us continue with learning how homeopathic treatments can help with infections, infestations, and the immune system, starting with the letter M, part 2. Infections are almost daily occurrence, but if we are healthy, our immune systems deal with them before we notice any symptoms. Most microorganisms enter the body through the nose and mouth, in the air, in our food, sometimes on dirty fingers. Some enter through cuts and abrasions, while others invade the urinary reproductive tract through the urethra or vagina. Many of the microorganisms with which we share this planet are harmless. Some permanently inhabit the inside and outside of the human body. A few even produce substances useful to it and prevent harmful bacteria from finding a foothold. This is true of certain bacteria in the large intestine and vagina. Some bacteria are harmless in one part of the body, but damaging in others. This is true of E. coli, which is benign while it is in the colon or rectum, but harmful if it is transferred to the urethra, vagina, or mouth. Each kind of microorganism, whether it is a bacterium, virus, fungus, or blood parasite, 
comes special chemical markers known as antigens. Some strains of lymphocyte, which is a kind of white blood cell produced in the lymph nodes, spleen, bone marrow, adenoids, tonsils, and the wall of the gut recognize antigens and stimulate other lymphocytes to produce proteins called antibodies, which then disable the carrier organism. Other lymphocytes directly attack and destroy the invading organisms. For about six months after birth, babies are protected by their mother's antibodies. After that, the immune system is sufficiently mature to start manufacturing its own. Homeopathic immunization does not involve producing live or dead viruses or antibodies into the body. Instead, remedies are prepared from diseased tissue or secretions using the traditional dilution and succession method. Like other homeopathic remedies, they contain in highly potent form the essence of the source material used. In this case, the essence of the disease organism and its toxins. The body reacts to such remedies known as nosodes by sharpening its immune response. The production of antibodies in response to antigens, the so-called immune response, is not the body's only line of defense. The body's first line troubleshooters are neutrophils and macrophages, which are two kinds of white blood cells that constantly patrol the bloodstream and tissue fluids and respond immediately to the chemical and thermal signals sent out by tissues when they become inflamed. If inflammation is suppressed, white cell activity is impaired. Neutrophils and macrophages gobble up and digest offending microbes, foreign particles and other noxious elements. The resulting pus is a mixture of necrotic tissue, dead bacteria and dying white blood cells. Infections can be treated by killing the germs that cause them or by helping the immune system to deal with them, or both, depending on general health and the virulence of the infection. Traditional antibiotics can deal with bacteria, but not viruses. After a course of antibiotics, like yogurt or kefir, eaten daily for at least five days helps to repopulate the gut with the beneficial bacteria that the antibiotics have killed, along with the harmful bacteria that was their main target. Homeopathic remedies, improved nutrition, fresh air, exercise, and rest can restore the coping ability of the immune system. In some cases, homeopathic remedies and antibiotics used together may be necessary. Constitutional homeopathic treatment is always advisable after serious illness. Occasionally, as a result of aging or exposure to certain virus, bacteria, chemicals, and environmental factors, the body loses some of its ability to discriminate between self and non-self, or fails to recognize and destroy its own abnormal cells. The first kind of impairment leads to autoimmune diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis and systemic lupus. The second leads to cancer. Allergies, distressing reactions to certain drugs, chemicals, foods, and other substances that seem to be tolerated by the majority of people are the downside of having an immune system. Infectious mononucleosis is a viral infection spread by personal contact which begins rather like influenza with a fever, sore throat, headache, general achiness, Within a day or two, the glands become swollen and painful. The tonsils enlarge and become dirty looking, and jaundice or a rash, similar to that of rubella, may develop. Though these symptoms wear off in two to three weeks, full recovery may take some time. Some antibiotics are ineffectual against viruses. The only treatment is rest and plenty of fluids. Your doctor will do a blood test to confirm the diagnosis, but this is not always reliable, as mononucleosis can involve many viruses, not just one. Constitutional homeopathic treatment is recommended if the condition drags on. Specific remedies to be taken every four hours for up to 10 doses during the acute phase. Sudden onset of high fever, person excited, incoherent and red in the face. Use Belladonna 30C. Feeling chilly and shivery, sticky tongue, sticking tongue out makes glands and neck feel painful. Cold air and mental exertion make symptoms worse. Use 
cystis 6C. Headache, weakness, muscular pains, ulcers in throat make swallowing difficult. Use elanthus 6C. Dark red tonsils, swallowing causes pain that shoots up towards the ear. Food and hot drinks make swallowing more painful. Use Phytolacca 6C. Glands distinctly swollen, especially if sufferer is a child and a late developer. Use Barita Carb 6C. Chilliness, sweating, sour taste in mouth, feeling mentally and physically worn out. Use Calcarea 6C. Offensive perspiration, glands feel tender. Use Mercurius 6C. Prevention. Infectious mononucleosis nosode 30C taken once a day for up to 10 days would be a sensible precaution if family, friends, or colleagues are affected. Self-help. Rest is the best medicine. Avoid strenuous exercise and do only 75% of what you are actually capable of. Take extra vitamin C, B-complex, and zinc, and evening primrose oil. Mumps. The mumps virus causes the mumps. It is a highly contagious disease and spreads rapidly from the infection person to others. A person may get infected with the mumps virus by coming in direct contact with an infected person through infected saliva or by inhaling respiratory do droplets infected with the mumps virus. A, patient's with, a patient with a mumps virus will complain of not feeling well and develop a fever. These symptoms will be followed by the swelling of the parotoid glands accompanied by pain. The pain will get worse while eating. Other symptoms may include a headache, earache, muscle aches, and poor appetite. Specific remedies to be taken four times daily. For mumps accompanied by fever, there is swelling of the parotoid glands and marked pain. The pain is usually shooting or stitching in nature. Sometimes the pain from the parotoid gland extends to the throat. The patient's face appears red and flushed with heat and the body temperature also rises with a throbbing headache and dryness of the throat. Use Belladonna 30C. Inflamed, swollen and high, highly painful parotoid gland on the right side with swelling and a rise in temperature on the right side of the patient's face. The pain in the parotoid gland gets worse on swallowing with shooting pain to the right ear and increase in saliva and, of and an offensive odor from the mouth. Use Merck Sol 30C. For inflammation of the left parotoid gland and symptoms affecting the left side of the face, which is highly sensitive to touch, which worsens the pain. The area around the left ear and cheek is red and hot to touch. The pain gets worse on swallowing, especially warm liquids. Use Lachesis 30C. For inflammatory swelling of the parotoid gland, when accompanied by intense, unendurable pain, irritability and restlessness, use Chamomile 6C. In cases where the mumps infection metastasis the infection to the brain, use Apis Mel 30C. In cases where the mumps infection metastasis into the mammary glands, ovaries or testes has occurred, use Pulsatilla 30C. Trifolium repens 6C is a prophylactic against mumps. I have a great many videos now on many different topics, so I've decided to make several different video playlists so that it's easier to find videos of greatest interest. So please check out my playlist page. Well, that's it for now. To stay up to date with my latest videos, make sure to subscribe to this free YouTube channel by clicking the red subscribe button right below this video. Take care.